Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another PS5 video. So we have some major developments happening here on the PS5. Uh, the console has been attacked from multiple different angles. We're going to go ahead and cover all of the main developments here in this video, starting with the biggest one that's happened most recently, which of course is that Spectre has released his Bipervisor exploit, which is the first public PS5 hypervisor exploit that has ever existed. So this is a pretty big deal. It's the first full chain exploit, essentially bringing the PS5 to the same level of exploit that we have on the PS4, which we've never had up until now. We've had hypervisor workarounds, which were not perfect, that had a lot of issues like the lib hijacker. And now we finally have the first proper hypervisor exploit. Now it does only work up to 2.50 firmware right now. Um, it will support 1.x up to 2.50. Uh, the initial release only supports 2.50 firmware right now. Offsets will have to be gathered on the other firmwares to get support for those. So this is still very early stages. It was just released only a few hours ago uh, since I'm recording here. Now this is coming to us after the Hardware.io conference where Spectre did his talk showcasing the exploit. Now that has not been made public. So that talk will most likely be uploaded to the Hardware YouTube channel in the next couple of weeks. And Spectre is also going to release the slides from that talk. We do have several pictures from that talk there um, from people in the audience. So we can see, you know, some of the things that were discussed, but we have the whole exploit released now anyway. So if we head over to the GitHub project, now the way this exploit works, it's a little bit involved what you have to do here. So if we go down to the instructions, there's actually two exploits included. There's a jump table exploit and a QA flags exploit. It seems the jump table exploit is the older exploit and the one that uh, you're really intended to use is the newer QA flags version. So if we head down here to important notes, it says currently only 2.50 firmware is supported for homebrew enabler hen support for other firmware versions will be added at a later time. The exploit payload is by provisor.elf uh, will need to be sent twice before suspending the system. And again, after resuming, you will have to put the system into rest mode manually yourself. And then kernel dump from QA flags exploit will not contain hypervisor.data region at the moment. If this is important to you, dump using the jump table exploit after porting or disable nested paging first. That is on the to-do list. So yeah, the actual information about how to run the exploit, you run the UMTX exploit chain using WebKit or BDJ and then run the elf loader, which will automatically run the elf loader in the WebKit version anyway when you run the UMTX exploit. It will then run the elf loader and you want to then send the bypervisor.elf file using netcat or a payload injector. And then from there, you put the system into rest mode after loading that payload. You then power the system back on and then you send the bypervisor elf file a second time. Now you can do this using John Tornblum's elf loader, which will run in the background, I believe, and recover after rest mode. So it'll still be running. You can just send the elf file again. But if you're not using John Tornblum's elf loader, you'll have to use the one in the WebKit, which means running the UMTX exploit a second time after recovering from rest mode and then sending the bypervisor elf file again. And then that should get the exploit up and running. Now, what is uh, pretty interesting is there is actually a version of Hen, as you can see here, Homebrew Enabler Hen is supported currently for 2.50. So we actually have a Homebrew Enabler already ready to go by the looks of things. So yeah, pretty exciting stuff here. This is still the very early version of it. Now I know there's not a huge number of people that are on these older firmwares 1.x and 2.x, but you know, this could certainly help development, improve developments overall, even for higher firmwares, because being able to dump the kernel and being able to access it uh, could lead to new developments that could perhaps be ported to higher firmwares. So there could still be some benefits that come out of this for people on higher firmwares, uh, even if you're not on a 1.x or a 2.x firmware right now. Now, that's not the only developments that we have, though. There actually has been some significant developments also for 7.61 and higher firmwares. So let's go ahead and look into some of that. In relation to the 7.61 UMTX exploit through the Blu-ray drive, so Hammer83 has managed to achieve stability with the Blu-ray drive exploit. So you can now run the Blu-ray drive exploit on firmwares up to 7.61 without kernel panicking and getting it to run all the way to completion. So when you run this successfully, it will say that uh, kernel read write was serialized for a follow-up execution. Once you see that message, and then it will also come up saying that the jar loader is waiting for another payload. Once you see those two messages, that means it has ran through to completion. 
and so far it seems pretty stable. I've not had any kernel panics. I've been able to use uh, the UMTX1 snapshot and the UMTX2 snapshots that were uploaded two days ago and they seem to be working just fine. We also now have a kdata dump snapshot.jar as well which can allow you to actually dump your kernel data from your PS5, which means we're now moving into the next phase of development with this particular version of the exploit. We've moved on from trying to achieve stability to trying to actually get payloads ported. And part of that is being able to dump the kernel data for your firmware so that we can then get the necessary offsets from that kernel data to port payloads to work on your firmware version. So that's the stage that we're at at the moment. We also have the uh, PS5K stuff that's trying to be ported onto other firmwares too, although there is an issue where it's getting stuck at the moment at a certain point and is not able to gather all of the updates. I think we're still waiting for Slayer's Govi to perhaps find a way to, you know, fix and update the porting script to get it into a working stage. There are other developers, people like Echo Stretch, who are also working on improving the porting tool to be able to get all of the necessary offsets. So, so anyway, that's the progress that has been made there. We're also looking at a potential FTP server being ported over soon. So yeah, some good stuff going on there. So moving on to some more news. Yes, we're not done. We actually have Shuffle2, who has also done a talk at this time SES 2024, which was the Kaspersky Security Analyst Summit, I believe. So you can see here, he made a post saying he's having a great time uh, at SES 2024. You can find the slides for my talk here. Didn't get through all the slides in time. And then he also provided a link to a tool he created to interface with the EMC, EFC and EAP. So this talk was primarily about exploiting different components, hardware components on the PS5, the EMC, the EFC, and the EAP. Uh, one of those being the Southbridge chip, another one being the SSD controller, I believe. So he's created a tool to be able to access those devices and he's posted the slides of his talk here. Uh, so you can go ahead and look through them yourself. So generally, this is mostly useful for the repair industry, for people trying to repair PS5 consoles, for getting things like error codes, and having firmware dumps from these chips and various other things that can be useful in repairing consoles. So that's primarily what this is, but this could also provide some entry points as it says here. So the Selena reasons to hack, controls power, clocks, resets on the board, makes automation of the board easy. Think of it like baseboard management controller, BMC, serves as an entry point to hack anything else on the board. So yeah, th this could potentially open up the door to some kind of hardware level exploits or maybe just something close to getting a revert method or something like that going on the PS5. But for the most part, it's going to be mainly for, you know, repairing, diagnostics, that kind of stuff. But it could potentially open up something interesting, hopefully. So that's what we've got there. And if we look at this, putting it all together, everything is wrapped into a Raspberry Pi Pico firmware and Python scripts, interfaces with various PS5 UARTs and embeds the Selena exploit in Pico firmware for better determinism, easily inject code into EMC, EFC, and EAP, and poke at things. So we basically have like a PS5 UART tool uh, created here that can be flashed onto a Raspberry Pi Pico that can be used to interface with the EMC and the EFC chip uh, using these exploits. So yeah, pretty cool stuff there from Shuffle2. Now following the presentation, Zeko also released a bunch of EMC dumps for different EMC firmwares kind of a mix going from 1.0 up to 10.0, as well as a bunch of EMC error codes, which can obviously be useful for diagnostics and repair. And then finally, before we end the video here, one last quick mention, which is that we did get a PS5 10.20 update, so a new update for the PS5. Obviously, you're not going to want to update if you want to be able to jailbreak your PS5 in future. You want to stay on as old a firmware as possible, as we always say. However, it doesn't look like there's been any major security updates in this version, at least uh, not publicly anyway. Normally they would say that they've improved security to the system software or something like that, but no mention of that here. Looks like a fairly small update, but that's basically it for now. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.